because one of the first things we're going to do this evening is um, unboxing, and we're going to do an unboxing. Okay, now technically, to be honest, we have already unboxed this to see what was in it. But what I wanted to do was give you an idea of what comes to me quarterly from the mug crate, mug crate from the wonderful folks at Horror and Clay. Um, or at least Mrs. Horror, and Clay. Mrs. Horror and Clay, yes, um, who do a quarterly mug crate. And so what this is, is a tiki mug, tiki glass, something along those lines, and various other tiki-esque bits uh, thrown in a box and sent to you. It's like a mystery package. You don't know what's in it. Uh, you know, kind of basics of it, but, um, but not much. Um, so today we've got a mug crate uh, for October of 2020. And uh, that is available at mugcrate.com. And this has a bunch of uh, like tiki cats on it. These are all um, very shag, uh, mid-century American uh, artwork um, black kitties on here, including one that appears to be in outer space. So that's kind of cool. Um, so you, the mailing labels are always interesting. So we get to uh, delve into the mug crate and see what's in the mug crate for October. David is having a downward. Wow. Oh, a Delmore 12. That's a, quite a nice little scotch there. Yes. Okay, so box opens. And uh, one of the reasons for doing the unboxing a little earlier was so that we didn't have peanuts flying everywhere because uh, that would be bad, right? Hey, is the little guy on? I don't, mm -hmm. I can't tell if he's on or not. He's like, uh, nope, now he's on. All right. So the little dude is now on. All right. All right. Yep. Wow, I'm apparently like really distracted and like zoom e shiny yippee. Okay, so mug crate. Um, wow, all right. So the mug crate always comes with a letter uh, that, um, or newsletter that talks about what's in the box and gives you background on those various pieces. And usually there's a cocktail or two. And here we have an ember cocktail and a figment cocktail. And I happen to know, because I've delved into this box previously, that Ember and Figment are the names of their cats. And so these drinks are named after them. And that's partially because uh, we're going to see that there's a tiki glass in here that is patterned after one of their cats, which is kind of cool. And Figment is spelled with an M-I-N-T. Yes, Figment is fig like the fruit, mint like the flower. Um, but it is a shout out to Figment the uh, mythical dragon uh, critter, critter, critter from uh, Disney. So, um, yeah, I'm not sure I'm legally allowed to say that, but I'm saying it anyway. So there you go. All right, so we delve into the box, and there's always a cutesy little thing. You've sometimes seen, um, I have a little, like, yellow tiki idol that's on a leather string that sometimes goes around my neck. Uh, I got that from a mug crate. Uh, today we have uh, this cool-looking set of... It looks like just beads, right? It's just like beads. But it turns out these are kukia nuts, K-U-K-U-I -K nuts that have been, um, it looks like uh, they're, well, they're definitely polished and there's some sort of glaze or something put on them. Um, so, you know, we can just uh, snatch those over there. So you've got these uh, cool little polished nuts hanging around my neck. No laughing, no, no laughing. Um, so there, you know, there's a little bit of a uh, little bit of tiki jewelry to go for the evening. Um, so what else is in them? Dana. We got a Dana. Excellent. Hi, Dana. Um, tuning in for your uh, weekly relaxation. Yay. Uh, so what else do we have in here? Uh, we have um, we have a wadded mess. No, what we have is a beach towel. Um, yeah, a beach towel with custom artwork on it um, that is tiki related. So. Uh, we, we've got is a, I don't know if you can see this, yeah, I'm going to step back. So there's this cat, which is one of their cats, I think, right? This is, I think this is actually Figment, uh, could be wrong. Um, and he's playing a ukulele, and this is a full-size beach blanket, so you can see the ukulele there. And it is, it's got embossed in there the artist, who is uh, Brad Parker. Brad Parker, Brad can't see that, probably can't see it. Nope, okay, but Brad Parker is uh, known for doing this tiki stuff, uh, which is very cool. Um, and what we're thinking of doing is replacing the pirate flag and putting the tiki cat up here. 
So uh, y'all can uh, tune in and tell me what you think of that idea, whether you think that's a good idea, bad idea. Um, so Tiki Cat going into the back storeroom, I think would be kind of cool. Dana likes your, uh, I love your polished nuts. <laughs> Brooke says nice nuts. Should have known. I should have known. My friends were going to take this in that direction because because they're my friends. And yeah, if it, if you didn't take it in that direction, you probably wouldn't be my friends. So uh, let's see, what else we got in here? Um, poke around. There is a stir. So we have a custom stir, and this is from Brian uh, Reckman. Reck Reckenmacher, sorry, Brian Reckenmacher. Um, and Brian is the individual that designed the glassware, is that right? Um, he designed the swizzle. And there's something else that he did. Uh, but anyway, it's got uh, a link to his website, brianreckenmacher.com. Uh, and this cool uh, stirrer that's kind of like a, a tiki paddle. Ow, 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 that hurt. Um, <laughs> what's burning? My hand is burning. That's what's burning this week. But it's got this great big toucan on the top and like a little boat oar or paddle down below. So that's kind of cool. And, you know, it's, you can't get them any other places. And uh, he's also known as Brian Rex, so B Rex online. All right, so that goes over here. Ow, that, that was painful. I should not do that anymore. No, let's not stick hands on the hot incense. Bad idea. All right, so uh, what you've been waiting for, because it's a mug crate, so there's glassware or mugs in here. And this week, this month, this quarter, sorry, this quarter, uh, we actually get a twofer. So, um, I'm going to go with the actual tiki mug first. And so this is a Hawaiian tiki mug, uh, making aloha part of your life, the Hawaiian tiki mug. And this is part of a collection from KC Hawaii. And they do five mugs in this series, the love tiki, the happy tiki, the lucky tiki, the hope tiki, and the money tiki. And, you know, if you hope to get lucky, and have a happy tiki, well, you better have money. I think that's how that works, right? So um, you could get any one, I guess, of those five. And what I got was the happy tiki. So here's this bright blue tiki guy. Yeah, looks really kind of cool. I haven't opened the box yet to see what, uh, what he looks like inside. So it's just this azure blue color, sort of a narrow base. That's a, that's a pretty cool little tiki guy right there. You can see that. Got that. Nifty. All right. So that's, that'll be a nice collection, uh, addition to the collection. Um, and it's one of the smaller tiki mugs, which I've got an inordinate number of large tiki mugs, which, yeah, you have one of those with a drink in it, and you're sloshed for the rest of the evening, which is not necessarily a bad thing. But it's kind of nice to have some smaller glasses around so that you can actually have multiple cocktails in an evening. Um, uh, okay, apparently uh, something else has been posted that is funny. So, so a cool cat beats a pirate flag. A cool cat beats a pirate flag. All right, all right. So oh. David says... I'm, I'm going to eat while she's talking here. Right? When he put it on, I was worried that his new nuts would bang against his mic. But they must be sock nuts after all. What? When I was holding up the towel, nobody wanted to comment about my nuts touching my pussy? Really? <laughs> nobody? Really? All right. We've gone in a really weird direction this evening. We're going to keep going in that direction. Um, but and, add some alcohol. But add some alcohol. Soon, very soon, we are going to add alcohol. Here is, here is the awesome figment glass. So this is a Collins glass, tall Collins glass. And um, I'm not sure if you can actually see this. Actually, what I'm going to do is this. Take this piece of paper, roll it, drop, <clears throat> drop it in here. And now hand that to my wife over the burning incense and not on top of the burning incense. B-Rex. Yeah. Isn't that cool? Wasn't that just a pretty awesome little glass? And um, speaking of which, I was going to be making drinks in uh, Collins glasses this evening. So I might just rinse some water uh, through this guy and use him tonight because uh, that would be easy enough to do. Um, 
So you might be wondering, uh, so these two cocktail recipes that we got here, um, we are not actually going to be making either one of those cocktails. I have a, I have a plan. I do, in fact, have a plan. I know it doesn't look like it, but we have a plan this evening. Um, the figment cocktail uses lemon juice, fig syrup, which is why we're not doing the figment cocktail this evening, orgeat, cream de menthe, which may be the other reason why we're not doing it. Uh, not that I don't have cream de menthe, but it's cream de menthe. Um, and plantation three-star rum, fill glass two-thirds with crushed ice, add the ingredients, swizzle it, and top it with ice and fresh mint. Actually, it doesn't sound too bad, um, especially since the cream de menthe and the orgeat are like a bar spoon, so that's like a teaspoon uh, worth. So that's not bad at all. Um, the ember cocktail, named after their other cat, is lime juice, honey syrup, got those, grenadine, anchos reyes verde liqueur, we know gots because Star can't have any, because um, it's just poison to her, essentially. Uh, it's, she poison, it's too hot. It's too spicy for her. I'm open. Uh, she is. And then Kasasha. Um, there's a little bit of, there's a couple of other minor additions that uh, we either have or don't have. But, um, but there you go. So that's the two cocktails named after their cats, Figment and Ember. Um, so uh, if I wanted, uh, of course, all the links are here. Uh, because this is good marketing. And so if I wanted, say, the ember glass, I could go online and get the ember glass to match the figment glass, or to complement, not match, to complement the, uh, the ember glass. Um, which we might do, because that's kind of a cool glass. I don't know. We'll think about it. Uh, in any case, we need to uh, get on with the getting on. So uh, the last few weeks, we have been doing nothing but going through and making cocktails and trying to decide what's going on the menu for the uh, Halloween party. Um, and in fact, we are going to do the Halloween party. It looks like there's going to be somewhere between six or eight cocktails uh, on the menu list. And the idea will be I'll make them up. Well, we will ping people that uh, are, local. are local. And those folks can either, uh, well, hopefully pick up from me the uh, pre-mixes for the cocktails. And so we can sit around and have a Zoom session, and uh, those people that are local that uh, have access to and can drop by can have cocktails as I'm mixing up the cocktails here for my lovely wife and I. Um, and others can just simply join in on the Zoom call, and uh, we will have, by gosh, by darn, a Halloween tiki party because I want to. All right, so we're going to do that. Um, tonight's not totally different from that. Um, as I was going down through the list of cocktails and making choices, yes, no, yes, no, yes, no, um, I want to always want to make sure that I have drinks that are uh, spirit forward of a spirit uh, of spirits that different people like. So I don't want everything to be rum. I don't want everything to be gin, um, which are the two predominant uh, tiki uh, spirits would be rum and gin. Um, you know, probably that uh, one of the drinks we're going to do is the um, murder hornet is the murder hornet, which is gin based, so uh, last week. right? And uh, we did a couple of weeks ago. We did the worst year, and uh, the worst year, if I remember right, is um, has vodka in it. Um, is vodka based, and we're going to use the Blavod black vodka for that. Um, and then we'll do a series of drinks, of course, that have rum in them, because yeah, rum, tiki, um, tiki rum, yay. Um, but what I'm seriously missing is a whiskey based drink. And as a consequence, what we are going to do this evening is try and come up with that whiskey-based drink, or at least get through enough of the playing around with things such that I can actually say, yes, I've got a whiskey-based drink. And um, so I played around, looked at different recipes, see what's online, um, checked out a bunch of cutesy names for cocktails. Um, and I thought to myself, you know, it would be really good to use because it's got some similarities to rum but is an overpoweringly rum, is definitely a rye, is um, the Basil Hayden Caribbean cask rye. So uh, what we have here is Basil Hayden's uh, rum finished Caribbean cask rye. So uh, this is a rye, uh, Kentucky straight rye whiskey blended with Canadian rye whiskey and finished with rum. So what does this mean? So it was actually in uh, Caribbean rum barrels for a while and they added a little bit of blackstrap molasses just before bottling to this which gives it a really interesting flavor because you get all of the spices from 
the the rye, the spicy almost heat from the rye, which is a very different spice profile from rum. But then at the end, all of these rum notes come in, like you would expect. You know, you get the molasses and the vanilla and a little bit of the dried fruit that you would normally get from a rum. And so I thought, you know, this would be a really nice thing to try and do a rum, or excuse me, a rye-based cocktail with. And uh, it didn't take me too long um, to come up with a really ridiculous name for the cocktail. Um, I figure what I'm going to do is call it Rise, R-Y-E-S, from the grave, right? See, there you go, Rise from the grave. And this led me to all sorts of things, looking at variations of the zombie, because zombies rise from the grave, right? Yeah. You know, unde t cocktail titles with the word undead in them, or cocktail titles with the word grave in them, all, right. all those sorts of things. You want me to serve some rum so that we can drink while I'm talking? Yes. Ah. We need to do a toast. We have to do a toast. A toast. Yeah, All right. So what do we got here? Oh, oh. This is a, this is a bottle of Parse. So uh, Parse is a Colombian rum. Uh, so South American as opposed to um, Central or the Caribbean. And uh, Parse is uh, lightly aged, right? As I remember. Um, this is yeah, aged twelve years. Mm, we'll we'll see. Um, uh, I'm not sure what the age restrictions are um, for in Colombia in terms of you know what their age statements could be. Uh, this is you're running into the same thing where uh, depending on what the rules are for Colombia, uh, they might be able to call it 12 year old rum just because there's some amount of 12 year old rum in it. You know? So it could be like mostly three year old rum uh, with some 12 year in it or something, or it could be all 12 year rum. Um, I actually found this bottle in of all places. Uh, Oklahoma, um, yeah, uh, Lawton. Lawton, Oklahoma. Lawton, Oklahoma. Yep, um, and uh, couldn't wait to get it home and give it a try. And uh, I've had this for a couple of years. I was not traveling to Lawton, Oklahoma, uh, any time in the recent past. So we're going to use the, our, our little pirate shot glasses. Oh, how cute! Little ship. She's got a little ship on hers, and I've got a little pirate face on mine. Do you want me to uh, sh show that off? Sure. I can reach over there and try and burn myself again. There we go. There's a little okay. ship. Yeah, it looks kind of cool. Um, so this is a, a rum that's a little on the sweeter side. Um, here, toss that, rinse it out, because um, there's a silverfish in that one, <laughs> which I'm pretty sure that uh, is not going to add any really good flavor to, um, to that Sorry? cocktail. I didn't think I needed to rinse them out, out of the case. Yeah, well, my we'll error. Thank you for getting you that. Yeah. I didn't need protein in my room. No. You got enough protein with dinner this evening? Because yeah. you got to finish your dinner? I did. Oh, yay. Good for you. Well, mostly. It's mostly. Over All right. There, there we okay. go. <laughs> Alright, it is 40%, so it wouldn't have killed all right. of the things, but, you know, it'll kill some of them. So, um, here's to, once again, someday maybe being able to travel. Right. And even if it's to, home. E even if it's to o only to Oklahoma, right? Um, and here's to uh, Christine being home yeah. and doing much improved, I might add. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yay! Good to hear. Uh, move the incense. But why? Don't 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 you like me burning my hands on the incense? Uh, That is a smooth, easy drinking rum. Uh, definite vanilla notes on the end, like significant vanilla notes. Like, wow, there's some vanilla extract notes there. David um, has a basil Hayden. Uh, hmm? David has a basil Hayden. Yeah, I'm saying that. Yep. Oh, okay. Basil Hayden. Uh, which basil Hayden is the question? Do you have the basil Hayden rye or uh, one of their other ryes? Because this is a very specific, uh, specific rye. Burning yourself is bad. Yeah, it is. So, yep, now we've moved that over, and we'll see whether or not I actually reach over and grab the incense again, because, you know, it's me, and I'm a klutz. So that's likely to happen. All right, so we have the base idea. I'm going to use the Basil Hayden's Caribbean Reserve Rye as my base spirit, um, and I'm going to call the, gr the drink Rise from the Grave, because that's going to be kind of cool and funny. Um, so the first thing we do is I go to all of my various resources on tiki drinks and look for tiki drinks that involve whiskey. 
Um, and here I'm thinking mostly American whiskey, not scotch. I'm thinking bourbons, rye, other forms of, of American whiskey, or maybe Canadian whiskey. Um, but I want to keep it to, to that end. And while doing that, I ran across the Roman twist. And the Roman twist is an ounce of lemon, an ounce of orange juice, an ounce of orgeat, an ounce of Kahlua, which is in my back room, so the wife will have to go fetch that, um, and then one and a quarter ounce of 100 proof bourbon. Now, I don't have a 100 proof bourbon on hand um, to make the Roman twist, but I was like, this sounds like a good base that I could work with. What, what else is out there that I could play with? Well, there's a drink called the Rise Up, R-Y-E-S-U-P, so Rise Up, yep. Um, two ounces of rye, one and a half ounces of espresso, quarter ounce single syrup, and then some orange bitters and heavy cream and that sort of thing. And it's like, oh, that actually sounds like a nice sort of coffee-based drink with a little punch to it. But since I'm trying to target the Halloween party, heavy cream is not going to work because we're not going to be delivering, you know, batches of heavy cream to people. So no, so none of that. But that got me thinking about maybe putting a coffee element to it. And the Roman twist has the Kahlua in it, which is coffee flavored. So, all right, so maybe the Basil Hayden's and some Kahlua will, uh, will work nicely together. Do I not have an open? I don't know, I didn't see one. Oh, okay. Uh, would the, just grab me the big Gentleman Jack's bottle. Okay. Yeah, do me, do me that for you. So, um, yeah, we have a great big bottle of Gentleman Jack uh, Magnum uh, size that's filled with uh, homebrew Kahlua. So, um, and it's back in the back room. Um, so we're going to use that. Uh, the other thing that uh, I ran across while looking at cocktail recipes that have the word grave in them. Yeah, it's uh, not real rigorous in my research uh, prospects here. Uh, the Grave Digger, which is two ounces of hard apple cider, an ounce of rye, and then topping that with some ginger ale, which sounded, you know, okay, that's, that's got some promise to it. So basically I got all these ideas running around in my head. And the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to try just a twist on the Roman twist. So I am going to do the Roman twist, but I am going to split my base, the ounce and a quarter, right, ounce and a quarter of 100 proof bourbon. I am going to split it one ounce. Actually, I'm going to go three quarters ounce of the Basil Hayden rye. And then I'm going to go three quarters of an ounce of an overproof rum. Now here, I don't want the rum to completely overpower the Basil Hayden rye. So I want a clean 151, and I don't own any Bacardi 151. Um, mostly because they don't make it anymore, and because why? Uh, there's much better 151s. But I do happen to have a bottle of Cruzan 151 lying around. Uh, usually I use that for flaming things and that sort of thing. But, I mean, it's perfectly drinkable, and I do need that extra overproof backbone to it. So that's what we're going to do. And this drink is built in a shaker, shaken with ice, and then poured over crushed ice into your, um, into your Collins glass. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Um, here's my Collins glass. I'm going to go ahead and fill the Collins glass with ice first. Uh, not for this cocktail. I, uh, Sarah was asking whether or not I was going to use the, the new glass, and I was like, yes, yes, but not for this one, uh, I don't think. Um, well, clearly not for this one. Uh, I may do another minor version of this later. All right, so there's that. I uh, need the uh, cocktail shaker. So we got, here's the big portion of the tin. Here's the small portion of the tin. All right, so what are we going to do? Uh, just straight up. Uh, follow the directions for the Roman twist and just split the base out. All right, sounds good. So I need an ounce of lemon juice. Somewhere around here I have lemon juice. Freshly uh, squeezed by my sweetie. So ounce of lemon juice. All right, there we go. One ounce lemon juice. And then we need an ounce of orange juice. Is the orange in the back? Nope, the orange is in the middle. All right, again, freshly squeezed orange juice. We had, I don't know where we got these oranges from, but they were amazing. They were so juicy and sweet. The only qualm I had about them was the skin was a little thin, which made it really hard to do any kind of garnishing with them. But man, the, the flavor on them was just awesome. 
So we'll have to look back through receipts and see where we got them from. Um, next up, uh, we have one ounce of Orgeat, or Orge. So here is my Orgeat. It's been sitting out for a little bit, which is good. So it's not quite as thick. Keep my Orgeat in the fridge like you all should. And uh, because of the fat content from the nuts and that sort of thing. Uh, yeah, we're back on nuts. All right, give me a break here, people. All right, uh, an ounce of Orgeat. Should have known, should have known. All go in there. Dun, do, do. So there's an ounce of nice, thick, wondrous Orgeat. Now, chatting with some of the bartender friends that I have uh, that make their own Orgeat, and they're all about making sure that this thing goes through like six or eight, 12 different filters um, so that it's a somewhat clearer liquid. I actually like the thicker, more viscous looking Orgeat. Uh, I think it adds something to the mouthfeel of the cocktails um, and it just looks kind of cool when you're pouring it out and it's clump, you know, that sort of thing. Yeah, so nifty. Uh, so there, I differ from my professional bartending friends. Who knew, right? Uh, we need an ounce of Kahlua, right? One ounce of Kahlua. The other nice thing about this drink is the proportions are easy. It's one ounce, one ounce, one ounce, one ounce, one ounce, one ounce and a quarter. Easy peasy. So here's a Kahlua. Uh, Dana, Russ, uh, this particularly goes out to you. This is Cardoza Recipe Kahlua. Yep. Made by Little Matt. Made by Little Matt. Yes, indeed. So there we go. That is, that's the Kahlua I keep on my bar, is, uh, is that recipe Kahlua. Um, and next, next, we need the spirit. So we have three quarters of an ounce of the Cruzon. And I have to find where I put my little bottle of Cruzon. There it is. Uh, little bottle of Cruzon. It's a little plastic hip flask of Cruzon. Isn't it cute? Yay. Doesn't burn your nostrils off, unlike the uh, Bacardi did. It is a very, very clean rum um, for being as hot as it is, and that backbone is going to be, to my guess, really important for this cocktail. So, um, where does this cocktail come from, and what is the, where does the name come from? So, uh, in the past, you may have heard me refer to a. Uh, a cocktail maestro, uh, Joe Slocum, C S C I A L C O M, something like that. Let me double check on the spelling. S C I A L O M, right? Uh, 1963, he created uh, the Roman Twist cocktail, and uh, he was in fact living in Rome at the time. Uh, this guy bounced all over the place. Uh, he was in Cairo. Um, he made it to New York at one point and just all over the place and everywhere he went he was just freaking amazing as a bartender and a lot of the really cool tiki drinks you'll find you can trace back to Joe which are just is just pretty awesome um he's strongly featured I think there's an entire chapter on him in uh, Beach Bum Berry's book uh, Potions of the Caribbean so that's uh, very cool uh, nice to read up about him um but he would get home from working a shift and find that his kids were still up. And so what he would do is he'd pile all the kids in the car and they would like take a drive throughout Rome. And it's like, let's go visit the Colosseum at three in the morning. Why not? Yay. As you do. As you do. So, you know, there's, there's you know, the background story on the Roman twist. Um, not really one of the Tiki Cannon cocktails, but, um, you know, I, I trust Joe's cocktail sense that this will be good. So now we're going to throw some cubes in here and then shake this up and see how this goes. I'm also really, uh, I haven't paid any real attention to total volume, um, so I'm not sure how this will fit in the glass, but we'll find out. You know, this is uh, experimenting and playing, so I don't have to be careful because, well, I'm not serving it to patrons, right? I'm just serving it to my wife and I, so it's all good. Um, Worst case scenario, it goes in the sink, but yeah, it's not going to happen. All right, so shake this up. All right. 
right. Oh, good there. Nice. Take a sniff here. Well, just drip a little of that. I may have to play with that. I mean, it's good, but I think it's going to take some playing. All right, so we're going to strain this in. We don't want any of these big rocks. Kind of a murky brown color. That's not really brown. It's kind of a tan color. There we go. Um, you know, ordinarily, I'd stick you know, sprigs of mint in here and some pineapple and all that sort of thing, but um, this is taste testing, so I'm not going to worry about it. Um, Wow, the, uh, the Kahlua really comes through on that. And it's probably the dominant note there. Um, I lose a little bit of the subtlety of the Basil Hayden. Uh, if you told me that was, that, that uh, was strictly a rum drink, I wouldn't be able to dispute it. Ooh. Yeah, it tastes, um, it's very nutty. Very nutty. Nutty, coffee-esque. Yeah. Uh, which, you know, is clearly my orgeat playing with the espresso. Um, I can see where it needs the extra proof, though. There's a little backbone missing to this. Yeah. Even with the, uh, the Cruzon added to it. So I may have, to, uh, may have to play with that. I'm going to keep that in the back of my mind. Um, hmm. Do you need another taste before I take it away? Oh, yeah. <laughs> she's pretty happy with this one, so yeah. Oh. Wow, I should totally not go there. Uh, so. I, I was going to say something about her really liking my orgeat, which is essentially a nut syrup. And yeah, but I thought, you know, that's that's probably way too crude for this crowd. Right, right. Yeah. <laughs> um, another Surfside sip. We were their affil featured affiliate. On Friday, we were yes on so, so on their post they on actually their Instagram on their Instagram they actually mm -hmm. featured us which you know wow you know how did how did I get to deserve that yeah. that's that sounds pretty cool, oh, that's um, cool. wait wait bring that back because I'm you know here I told you that proportions were slightly off oh, right yeah. so there's a little more there ta da all right so the Kalu is a little strong. Um, the orgeat's a little strong, so, um, and that's really what we're getting through on this. So I think, um, what I might do is change the, well, what I'm going to do is change the proportions up. Um, I'm also, um, I'm not getting much of the orange, but that's okay. Orange is usually kind of a bland flavor. Um, I might swap a little bit of the proportions of the lemon and orange, uh, there, I definitely want to cut down the Kahlua and the Orgeat. I might even, you know what I think I'm going to do? I'm going to take the Orgeat completely out of this. Um, and I'm going to go with the with a uh, Demerara syrup. So I don't have the nut flavor coming through. And hopefully what that'll do is it will keep the Orgeat from overpowering this more subtle notes of the Basil Hayden. And I'm going to up the amount of Basil Hayden in here. I'll keep the cruise on at three quarters of an ounce and up the Basil Hayden and try and get more of that flavor coming through. So what you're getting right now is a glimpse into my mental state and how I come up with new cocktails. Uh, you know, clearly I riff off of other people's cocktails and uh, taste what they've done, taste my riff on them, and then move from there and see what, uh, what else I can do. So, um, so what do we need? We need an ounce of lemon uh, but I wanted to up that a little bit. All right, that's what I said. Ounce of lemon. Yeah. So let's go an ounce and a quarter of the lemon. So. So there's three quarters. And there's a half. Half and three quarters is... Ounce, ounce and a quarter, right? Ounce and a quarter, and a quarter right? Sorry. Fractions, see children, it's useful. Wait, what? Um, I'm gonna back off on the orange, right? So I'm gonna drop that down to three quarters of an ounce. 
So basically I upped the lemon by a quarter of an ounce and I backed off the orange by a quarter of an ounce. So there's that. Orgeat normally would be an ounce of orgeat, but we're going with a Demerara syrup instead. Fresh batch of Demerara syrup. So this is a uh, two to one syrup and two to one by volume uh, sugar to water. And the sugar is roughly two parts white granulated cane sugar and one part Demerara sugar. Um, if you go all Demerara sugar, uh, it just it does not dissolve nearly as well. Um, and sometimes I get some particulate matter in there as well. And it just, it does not work quite as well. The trick I picked up from Smuggler's Cove is mix your granulate, granulated with your Demerara when doing that. All right. Um, now the Kahlua. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to back off on the Kahlua and go three quarters of an ounce of the Kahlua instead of a full ounce of the Kahlua. Um, again, what I'm trying to do is be able to up the notes of the rye in this cocktail because they were just completely being missed in the original version, right? Is that uh, a fair look at my wife, AKA guinea pig here. Um, and we still need three quarters of an ounce of the Cruzon because we need backbone on this thing. So we can do that. So there's three quarters of an ounce. I can't use any of my other uh, real high test rums. Um, so the two 151s that I have on the back bar here are the Hamilton 151, this guy right here, and the Lemonheart 151. Uh, both of these are great rums, but they um, their flavor profiles are very distinctive and very strong. And if I put either one of those in this cocktail, there's no way in heck I would ever taste any of the Basil Hayden. So uh, we're not doing that. We're going with the clean Cruzon instead. All right, so that was three quarters of an ounce of the Cruzon. Uh, previously, that would have meant uh, three quarters of an ounce of the Basil Hayden. So I'm actually going to double that. I'm going to go a full ounce and a half of the Basil Hayden. See if we can get some of those rye notes in here. So there's an ounce. There's an ounce and a half. And who knows? Uh, I may have corrected this right into the realm of, wow, that's horrible. Who knows? We'll find out soon. Um, right, I'm going to throw that there. Put some ice in this. What, did nobody catch that I was building that in the larger portion of the shaker as opposed to the smaller one and call me out on it? Oh well. I'm not going to worry about it. You shouldn't worry about it. What you should worry about is whether or not I get a drinkable cocktail out of this. <laughs> Actually, what do you care? You can't taste this. Only I can taste it. Oh, and my wife. Well, because if you're local, this might show up on the menu. So. And if it turns out really good, it might show up on the permanent bar menu, which would, that would be awesome. Which, you know, someday I'm going to actually have to put together, you know, what is the permanent bar menu for our bar here. Uh, now, that'll probably change, still change once a year or so. But um, just so that, you know, when somebody says, hey, I want a cocktail, I can put a menu in front of them and say, choose one of these. I can always do one of these because, you know, that would be nice. All right, so we're going to put put ice in here, crushed ice in the Collins glass. Yeah, nope, still going to go with the small Collins glass. Uh, I'm going to hit up my wife to run to the back room again for one of our next ventures, which is going to require the use of hard cider. Um, so I'm going to do that. Uh, uh, she'll, 
chilled would be fine, unchilled would be okay. Oh, see, we have different coloration. Slightly, uh, obviously this is going to have a slightly different mouthfeel because we don't have the amazingly thick ore shot coming into this. There we go. Um, so, clear off the moisture from this. So this was the original, and you can see that it's kind of a cloudy color, whereas this is much less cloudy, right? And was, as you saw me pouring, was clearly less viscous. So we will see how that works. And we're hoping, crossing fingers, hoping that the, the rye actually comes through on this one. Okay, so, um, wow, that's impressive. The, uh, the Kahlua I'm using, the, the home batch Kahlua, is really aggressive because we backed that off to three quarters of an ounce and it's still the predominant flavor here. Um, you have three different types. I didn't know which one you right, wanted. All right. Uh, you want to taste this um, and uh, see what you think of that, uh, particularly in comparison to this? All I get is espresso uh, and uh, or c coffee and, and almond from this one for the most yeah, part. Yeah, there's a lot more rye in that. Mm -hmm. I, of course, like this one better, but... Right. It's also sweeter. Right. Right. And, you know, sweet tooth. <laughs> it's good. I prefer this one. That one will kill Black Noir. You're right. <laughs> Boys reference. So, um, on that one, so the rye is definitely more present. Um, what do you think of the, the espresso in there, the Kahlua? Is it still overpowering the rye a bit? No, you don't think so? I think that's a good match. Hmm. I may, you know what? I have not had a taste of this in a few weeks and since I am trying to accentuate the flavor of it maybe maybe it'd be a good idea to know what flavor I'm trying to accentuate details details <coughs> all right got it yep pretty standard rye Again, the vanilla notes come in at the end because of the uh, the addition of the blackstrap rum and the uh, the casking. I lose a little of those vanilla notes. Well, but they come in. Once the Kahlua kind of dies away on the tongue, then those notes come through. Um, and then that's actually a pretty nice marriage, come to think of it. Um, yeah, so, uh, so, hmm, I, uh, that may work. I may have to tease this a little bit. I think I want a little more sour component still. Um, the wife is looking at me like, God, no, why would you do that? Um, I might go with a split base, actually, on the sour. I might do a, a lemon-lime sour uh, with this because uh, I think the lime would actually work well with the rum notes in here, which they weren't needed in the original Roman twist. So um, that might be the uh, another direction to go with that. I have to think about that some. Um, oh my gosh, I'll kick that up a notch. Go just drop that in there. Because I can, because it's my bar, right? Okay, so that will need to be cleaned out so that we can go on. All right, so that's one direction. And you can see I'm kind of happy with that, but I've got some ideas on where I need to take that, which probably means that Star and I are going to be drinking a few of those over the next week. Um, tomorrow's a holiday. Yay! Uh, so maybe we'll be drinking a few of those tomorrow. <laughs> uh, and then if that all works out, then uh, we'll put this on the uh, tiki menu um, and we'll go get some more Basil Hayden because we'll need more in order to do those drinks. But I could take this in an entirely different 
uh, direction, still using the Basil Hayden, but play more with the Gravedigger cocktail, which is the two ounces of hard cider, an ounce of rye, and top with ginger ale. Now, uh, I like ginger. Um, my wife isn't a particularly big fan of ginger, and some of my friends are kind of iffy on ginger in their cocktails. So uh, I'm thinking I'm going to avoid going the ginger route, um, but what I do want to do is maybe transform this uh, from something like this uh, into, a slight, into an even taller uh, cocktail and lengthen it using the hard cider. So we're going to go with sort of a Roman twist, but uh, what we're going to do with the Roman twist is we're going to use um, a hard cider for that to lengthen it out. And that'll make it a, a much lighter drink. Um, I may have to skip the espresso, though. Uh, the, I don't think the Kahlua notes are going to go with the hard cider. So we'll drop that out, um, which will be fine. Um, yeah, let's try that. Okay, so what are we going to do? We're going to start with uh, basically what we did beforehand. Um, doing a basic Roman twist. Uh, as long as I'm thinking about doing a split um, sour on this, why don't I go ahead and do that right here? Um, so let's look at, we go back all the way to the original um, recipe, lemon, orange, orgeat, Kahlua, and the bourbon. In this case, we're using rye. Uh, so that was one ounce of sour. Um, so let's go half ounce, well, mm-hmm. My sweet component is going to be Orgeat and Kahlua, except that I'm not putting the Kahlua in. And I'm going to get some sweetness off the hard cider. So... Orange juice and hard cider. Apples and oranges, yeah. Why not? Um, so, uh, I think I am going to go with the Orgeat, though, for this. So, let's start with the Orgeat. We're going to do a full ounce of the Orgeat. Um, so my wife keeps telling me that, oh, your palate is so much better than mine, and blah, 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 and you, you can taste all these differences and that sort of thing. But one of the things that I can't do is I don't necessarily have a real good feel for how some of these flavors merge and meld together. So in a lot of cases, I am just willing to experiment, to throw things together and see what happens. Um, with the flavors. So I don't actually know how well this is going to work out, but I'm willing to give it, you know, the good old college try or good old post-college try or however you want to do that. Um, so here I'm actually remembering to put my thick sweet ingredient in the jigger to start with and then we'll add the sour ingredients. So we're going all the way back to the original recipe. So uh, we've got one ounce of sour and that was originally lemon. I'm going to go half ounce of lemon. There's a half ounce. And I'm going to go half ounce of lime. Generally, that's orange. <laughs> Generally, I think uh, lemon goes better with rye. Uh, but this rye has such vanilla notes to it that I think the lime will uh, play well with it. So there's a full ounce there. Still want orange in there? That's what the wife was saying. Do we still want orange in that? Sure, why not? Let's uh, let's start with the base and then we can play off of that. So we're gonna go a full ounce of the orange. Right, yep. One ounce orange juice. So there's an ounce of sour, an ounce of orange juice, uh, the ounce of Orgeat. Normally we'd have an ounce of Kahlua. We're not gonna skip the Kahlua entirely. We're gonna go split base of three quarters of an ounce of the rye. You know what? Let's not do that. Uh, let's do that's three quarters of an ounce. Let's go full ounce and a half of the rye. Full ounce and a half of the rye. And we will just leave the rum out of it. How's that? All right, so there's our icky, milky, yucky looking stuff. And we're going to put ice in that. I mean, 
gonna need some more cubed ice at some point. We will see. Um, this is gonna go in. This is gonna go in our kitty glass because uh, I wanted a long drink for this because I'm going to lengthen it using the uh, cider. So I want a taller glass than the standard Collins glasses I was using. So we're going to use the figment kitty glass. So that goes here. They're sold out. Oh no. Maybe they'll make more. Glad I have mine. Ha <laughs> ha. All right. So there's our base. We're going to lengthen this with the cider. So I'm going to add the cider after I poured most of this into the tall Collins glass. So I need a strainer. And then I need to ask my wife some questions. So here this goes in. Do, 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 do. Do, do, do. Yep. Yes. And so we have some angry orchard here, but this is uh, this is their crisp apple, which is uh, I think this is seasonal. Am I correct? I think so. Yeah, I think this is seasonal, so we may not be able to get more of this. Uh, the Stella oh, Artois is very light. It's very cider. light and is available anytime we want it. It's right. also a dry cider, right. as opposed to some of the others that are sweeter. Right. And then we have the Smith and Forge hard cider, which is available all the time. Which is also available all the time. We have six percent, and four and a half percent, and the Angry Orchard is five percent. That's kind of a standard. Smith and Forge. Yeah. You want to do the Smith and Forge then? Yeah. All right. So that sounds like a plan. We'll do the Smith and Forge. I need to pop the top on this guy. It's supposed to be there. I have like a dozen church keys lying around somewhere. Can I find them? No. Pop them. This is why I have a wife. It was well, in the drawer he looked in. This is one of the many, many reasons why I have a wife. All right, so then we are going to just top this off. Let that foam a little bit. I think this actually probably needed a bigger glass, even bigger than this. So that's interesting. So we Question. We always have questions. The good old postdoc tribe. Uh, how do you know how long to shake something? Ah, good question. So uh, there's a couple of cues, uh, and some of this depends upon how cold you want it. And what level? Well, okay. It entirely depends on how cold you want it and how much dilution you want to have. So obviously, uh, in general. Uh, the longer you, I need to taste that. <laughs> Don't go running off with that. Um, in general, up to a point, the longer you shake it and the smaller the ice you have, the greater the dilution you will have and the colder you will get. Obviously, there is a equilib. Well, not obviously. Those of us that have chemistry <laughs> in our backgrounds. So there's an equilibrium point, at which point the ice and water and alcohol are essentially all at the same temperature and you're not going to get it any colder than that and you're not going to get any more dilution than that. Mm -hmm. So you can just turn around and set it there um, and so long as it remains largely sealed you don't get too much thermal action and it'll just remain that same level of dilution and coldness. So it kind of depends on how cold and how much dilution you want to get. Um, in general I'm going to shake 10 to 12 seconds minimum if I want to get a higher level of dilution, I'll be shaking closer to 20 seconds. Um, you can also, uh, y you develop a little bit of an ear uh, for, what? I don't, I don't have enough experience oh. to develop an ear. Right. For um, one of the things you can do is, for me, I shake it until it's too cold for me to hold. That's my cue I use, but I don't have the nuance. That he has, and you know, the the shaker will ice up, mm -hmm. and uh, 
Oh, oh yeah. So at the very least, you want to shake it until the shaker ices up. Uh, a lot of your drink instructions will say, you know, drink until like it is really, really cold. And that's, you know, at the point where you're having trouble holding on to it because it's so cold. It's like you're holding on but to it ice cubes. It also depends on if you have chef hands or right. not. Yeah. I, yeah. I don't. So. Right. Yeah. This is yummy. Yeah. Uh, so you think? Yeah. Although it's probably more, I think you're losing the basil hidden. It's yeah. It's not what you're looking for. Yeah. Um, I mean, yummy, yes, but not quite right. what... It's uh, not what you're looking for, but it's a yummy drink. Uh, so basically, I think what we're ending up with is uh, this a is a... spiced apple cider. Yeah, it's a fortified cider, right. which is it's fine, but I would probably not use... What you want. I would use a different rye in right. that case, because I'm going to lose all of the special ingredients, that I, special yes. flavors I get from the Basil Hayden. Um, But yeah, uh, so a hard, I'm going to go a completely different direction, make this a hard cider drink. So heart, and she's going to dribble some of the Kahlua on top of it to prove me wrong is what she's going to do. Um, so if what, I, what you want is a fortified cider drink, um, then I think um, maybe using the similar proportions, but using a different... Uh, a different rye would work really nicely with that because the the spices of the rye really go with the apple. Mm -hmm. They really make that. So you think this is better? I do a little bit. Okay. So now I'm getting a little more dilution from the cider, mm -hmm. and so I'm tasting the cider more. Mm -hmm. um, so um, I think that's a nifty idea, and if I want an apple drink. Uh, for the Halloween party, I think I might go in that direction, but um, that's not actually, not rye it's not, right, I want a rye drink, I don't want a cider drink, um, although a cider drink would be fine for, for Halloween, that would be per perfectly appropriate, but folks can go out and get cider and drop, you know, bombs of rye in them, so they don't, they don't need me for that, so uh, probably not going to take that in that direction, uh, nice idea, um, uh, but that takes us away from the Gravedigger cocktail, which is the hard cider, the rye, and the ginger ale. Um, I'm not really sure that uh, ginger ale would add anything to that cocktail, quite frankly. Um, and a ginger beer would just beat the living daylights out of the cider, so you'd never taste any of the cider. So that would that's the wrong direction to go with this. So this version uh, of the uh, Rise from the Grave, I think, is still kind of where I'm looking. Even with a little more dilution there. Yeah, I still need to back off the, uh, the espresso. The espresso, the uh, Kahlua. And definitely, uh, as it dilutes more, I still get more and more of that uh, coffee flavor. Um, which is fine, but it beats up on the, the Basil Hayden, so I'm going to have to back that off even further. Requires more experimentation. All right, so uh, we've done a couple of different variations on this, uh, on the the basic Roman twist, uh, and then we went in the Gravedigger style, still looking for an appropriate uh, Basil Hayden rye forward cocktail for the Halloween party. So the last bit is, okay, well, we could take this in an entirely different direction. Um, the Rise Up cocktail, the one that had the heavy cream in it that I discarded, you know, it's like, nope, not gonna do that, um, does have the interesting addition of a bunch of orange bitters, and there's some variations out there I've seen with chocolate bitters added to it, which got me to thinking. It's like, so if I took that rye and I mixed that rye with some chocolate and some orange bitters, can I go after like a chocolate orange flavor for Halloween? So, you know, black and orange is kind of typical Halloween colors. So, hmm, how might I do that? So I'm thinking I'm going to start from a Mai Tai recipe. So a Mai Tai, uh, you got one ounce of sour, a uh, half ounce of or orange curacao, a half ounce of orgeat, or you can split the orgeat, like half ounce orgeat, or, excuse me, quarter ounce orgeat, quarter ounce of some form of syrup, like the Demerara syrup or something along those lines, and then two ounces of your spirit. Um, again, the original Mai Tai used a very particular, uh, was it Ray and Nephew? 
is it Ray Nephew 17? I'm trying yeah. to, yeah, I think yeah. so. Um, and people have been trying to recreate that specific flavor profile for ages and ages because that that alcohol is no longer made. Um, but if we're not tied to trying to recreate the original Mai Tai, we're just going to use that recipe as a base, then I don't need to go worrying about what rums are in here. I can just use the Basil Hayden as my base spirit and see how that works. All right, so I kind of like that idea. So um, we're going to go with that. We're going to uh, grab another one of these guys. Take this out. Put that here. These guys go over there. All right, so what are we going to do? Um, I, again, do not want my Orgeat overpowering this cocktail. So I'm only going to go with a quarter ounce of the Orgeat, which is here. Do quarter ounce or shot. And then I'm going to go with a quarter ounce of the Demerara syrup. Um, hmm. Demerara. Let's let's try a cleaner syrup. Let's just go with a straight up two to one simple syrup. So this is white cane sugar and water. That's all that's in there. All right, so that goes in there. So there's a full half ounce of our sweet. Then we're going to add an orange flavor to this, which is part of the traditional Mai Tai, uh, is, uses dry curacao. And I've got some dry curacao down here somewhere. Here we go. How are we doing? My nuts brushing up against the microphone again? Yep, all right. Uh, so dry curacao, half ounce. Uh, you don't, in this case, I don't want to use a triple sec or like a Grand Marnier or something like that that's going to bring extra sweetness to this. You definitely want a dry curacao. So there's the orange, dry curacao. So this is taking the part of the, uh, like the orange juice that we saw earlier in the Roman twist. Still have orange in there, but at this time it's coming from the uh, spirit, the curacao. Um, and then the last thing is the booze, and we're just going to go two ounces, full two ounces of the Basil Hayden rye. So this is a rye-based man, uh, rye-based Manhattan. Yeah, it's a rye-based Mai Tai using the Basil Hayden. And uh, hopefully all of these flavors play well together and do not beat up on the poor little Basil Hayden rye that we've got in here. So let's add some ice. Um, for the Mai Tai, generally folks will use a combination of cubed ice and crushed ice. Um, tends to be how I do it as well. Uh, so there's some crushed ice, there's some cubed ice. What that means is we'll get more dilution. Ta-da! Yeah, see, I can't even scrape the frost off of it. It's so cold at this point, so that's... That star would be yelping and, and letting go of this thing at this point. And that's what you want. You want this thing to be hyper cold for Mai Tai. You want them hyper cold. Um, typically, this goes into a double rocks glass. And we have a double rocks glass right there. Usually from a prior mug crate. That's true. And again, this is going to be over crushed ice. Dump some crushed ice in there. I can always top it off if I need be. I uh, could double strain this to get an even clearer look. Don't know that that's entirely necessary. Drip, 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 drip. 
All right, so there we go. So here is a Basil Hayden Rye Mai Tai. And our cat, which, you know, we're getting ready for Halloween. We got ourselves a black cat. Okay, we've had a black cat for quite a while, but... And he's showing up without his bat wings. Yeah, Yay. no costume at all. No costume at all. He's wearing mommy for his costume. Right. Hmm. Oh. Hmm. I'm liking. The Basil Hayden definitely comes through on that. Ooh. Basil Hayden does come through. Yeah. That is good. Um, I'd be willing to add... Wait, what am I doing? Wait, no, duh! The whole point of this was that I was going to add the chocolate and the orange bitters to it and totally forgot. Right. Right, so we need to add that. So what do we have? We have uh, chocolate bitters. Make sure this bottle looks an awful lot like the lavender bitters and that would not go it well in this. Not. Not. Yeah, lavender and rye doesn't seem like it would be a good thing to do. So we're going to go, uh, let's see, one, two, three chocolate bitters? Sounds four. Like four. Four. You want more chocolate in there. There's a fourth. Fourth zot. And then go three orange? Yep. Okay. Uh, here we're using Angostura orange bitters. We could also use Regan's orange bitters uh, or some other. So we're going to go one, two, three, you said? Mm -hmm. Okay. Hopefully, because that's what's in there. Mm -hmm. I can't back it out. Um, um, straw. Stir. I'll just do this. Let's spill ice on the uh, bar mat. That's what bar mats are for. Why we love bar mats. Yeah, should have thrown the bitters in before I shook it, but, you know, we'll see. How does this go? Think we need to back off the bitters. Yeah, that's all bitters now. Yep. Uh, it's good bitters. It is. It tastes like chocolate and orange, it but, I, but, like I, chocolate but I don't get any of the rye. Right. So, so less bitters. But less bitters. Yeah. Less bitters and more incorporation of the bitters. Right. So when we go to shake it, the bitters should already be in there. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm thinking like two and two. Two and two. Two right. and two is probably better. All right. So there we go. Um, so I'm not sure whether we're going in this direction which is the variations on the uh, the Roman twist, or we're going this direction, which is uh, a twist on, uh, on the Mai Tai, a Mai Tai made with rye, uh, made with a, a rum-based rye, um, or a, a, a rye that has an addition of rum to it, which is why it seems to work so well in this. Um, but yeah the, the, um, yeah, the bitters overpower just a tad. I was almost happier without the bitters, so, I mean, maybe I was right and just leave the bitters out. Um, I mean, one thing I could do, I could make a second one of these and just pour it in on top and that would uh, have the amount of bitters that were in there. Um, I don't know. I think I, I think I liked it originally without the uh, additions. Um, so maybe we just chuck the idea of the uh, orange I'll and... try it. You know, make a small one, but one of each in. Yeah. Um, I mean, we do have the orange already from the curacao, so right. maybe we don't need the the bitter orange that's coming from the uh, from the Angostura bitters. Maybe just one or two dashes of chocolate. Yeah, and I can always play with that, right? I can make a mai tai, add a zot of chocolate bitters. See the rye tai. The rye tai. I don't know. I, I like uh, rise from the grave is still uh, still going on in my uh, in my brain um, as a possible namesake for this. So um, this, is, this is my plan, is to, uh, to walk through doing um, some playing around with uh, some rye that I have that I know I want to feature, uh, come up with an interesting name for a cocktail, and then do some research on other cocktails that might be tangential to that, and then you start playing. And you try something and go, does that work? Um, kind of, but here I want to change up this and change up that. So you're getting a, an insight into my crafting processes. So um, yeah, you, you probably never wanted to look inside my brain, but there you go. You get it anyway. Um, maybe it's not so bad as long as I stay. At least it's not my brain. 
as long as I stay on target with cocktails, we're, we're okay with looking inside my brain. Right. Um, I got to clean this mess up, uh, put all my syrups and juices and that sort of thing away. It'd probably be good if I finished my dinner. Um, I hope you've had a good time. I know I've had a good time just playing around with this and letting you glim get a glimpse inside my maniacal process for creating cocktails. And uh, someday soon you will see what the results of that are um, and we will publish what the, uh, the cocktail menu for um, the Haunted Tiki Party will be. Um, that'll be coming up in the next week or so, probably. I'm so, try and finalize things. So the wife is. They can hear me. The wife is coming over to the microphone. Right. So do I need to give you the microphone? No, I can speak into your chest. Oh baby. <laughs> so uh, our. <laughs> so our.